welcome back everyone uh, in this uh, lecture i will actually give you some useful definitions uh, that will be uh, very useful later in the theory and we will also see some examples of uh, normal subgroup subgroups uh, that naturally arise from given groups okay so let's uh, begin with uh, uh, the following definition uh, that is the center of g so as before g is given group okay so this is already fixed uh, notation so then given a group g so we define what is called the center of g which is uh, denoted by z of g okay so this is those x in g such that those x that commutes with all y in g okay all other elements of capital g so x y should be equal to y x for all y in capital g so those elements that commute with all elements of capital g uh, they are, they form a center of form the center of capital g so it is easy to check this center is indeed actually a normal subgroup of g okay so this is the claim the center is indeed normal subgroup of g so how one can verify this so you can see that uh, first of all it is a subgroup so that is something easy to verify so let us start with two two elements x and y inside center of g using the characterization it is enough to prove that xy inverse is in the center of g so let us see what happen if we apply xy inverse and then choose some random element z and then see what happens so for any z in capital g we can see that x y inverse z is nothing but x y inverse z but since y is actually uh, commuting with x so it is a simple calculation to see that y inverse is also commuting okay so since y z is exactly same as z y by pre multiplying and post multiplying by y inverse you can see that y inverse y z y inverse is same as y inverse z y y inverse so which gives z y inverse equal to y inverse z okay so these two terms get cancelled gives identity so then you get z y inverse and these two terms get cancelled and you get identity so that gives y inverse z so that means y inverse z is same as uh, z y inverse so this becomes x z y inverse so which is exactly equal to x z y inverse so now you can see that x z is same as z x because x is in the center so then it gives z x y inverse so which is same as z x y inverse so because we have chosen z to be some arbitrary element in capital g so we see that x y inverse commutes with all elements of capital g so that means x y inverse is again inside your your center okay so that proves that center of g is indeed subgroup of g so now we want to prove that uh, uh, center of g is indeed normal subgroup okay for that we can use any one of the definitions for example if we start with any g in capital g then if i compute z sorry g into z of g so since all elements of z of g commutes with uh, this g so you can see that this is exactly equal to gx x in z of g but for any x we know that for any x in z of g gx equal to xg so this set is same as xg when x is in z coming from z of g so that means this is exactly equal to z of g sorry z of capital g times small g so this proves that g z of g is exactly equal to z of g g for all g and g so that means what that means this z of g is indeed normal subgroup of capital g so from this abstract definition so we can see that the center is always 
normal subgroup a normal subgroup of capital G. Of course, given some example of uh, non abelian group it will be actually very hard to compute uh, what will be the center, but we will try to compute uh, center for some speci specific examples later. Okay. So, and it is e easy to see some properties of center. For example, if G is abelian then you can easily see that the center is being actually full. So, it is actually a characterization of abelian group. If you take G is abelian then the center is exactly equal to capital G. So, that is by definition. So, this is maybe I will leave it to you to check. So, this is I will leave it as exercise. Okay. So, this is something uh, interesting uh, uh, normal subgroup of capital G okay. and let us see some examples very specific examples. So, for which uh, uh, we get uh, normal subgroups. Okay. Uh, so, like I said so one can identify okay, normal subgroups as kernel of group homomorphisms. So, whenever you are interested in producing uh, normal subgroups you should look for group homomorphisms. Okay. So, that is the best way to actually come up with uh, normal subgroups. So, here some uh, trivial examples. So, if you start with an abelian group, so then any normal uh, any subgroup will become a normal subgroup. Okay. Any subgroup is normal in G. Okay. So, that is because all elements commute. So, if you compute G capital H G inverse for any uh, capital H subgroup of capital G, you can see that G H G inverse will be just uh, H. Okay. So, this is something very easy to verify. So, what is advantage? It may sound like a very trivial uh, fact, but this actually kind of allows us to produce new new examples from given abelian groups. Okay. For example, one can actually take the group of rational numbers with respect to addition. Okay. So, then if you take for example, this set of integers again subgroup of integers with respect to addition. So, this is a subgroup inside the group of rational numbers. So, then from our actually construction one can talk about the factor group Z, uh, Q modulo Z. Okay. This is very interesting uh, quotient group. So, this is actually a quotient group or factor group. So, this group is somewhat very very interesting group. Okay. So, let us see uh, uh, like how uh, some typical element in this group looks like. Okay. If I take this Q mod Z, okay, what it is? It is those cosets P by Q plus Z where P by Q is a rational number okay. and one can parameterize this P by Q as okay, P is coming from Z and Q is coming from for example, natural number and then this mod P and Q. So, they being okay, GCD 1 whenever it is non-zero. Okay. We can choose it to be GCD of this is 1 whenever P non-zero. Okay. So, we can actually choose some parameterizing like this, but if you really think about it, okay, uh, for example, if I am interested in let us say uh, some rationals. Okay. So, so if you if you try to plot okay, the rationals in the real line, okay, you have 0, you have 1, you have 2 and so on and then minus 1, minus 2 and so on. So, the rationals will somewhere lie here. Okay. But each rational number what we are indeed doing, we are taking uh, this Z translation that is the coset. Okay. So, if I take a rational number here, okay, let us call it capital uh, sorry X. So, then I am looking at all this integral translation of X that is my element in Q modulo Z. Okay. So, then as an element it is a subset of this R okay, which is all this Z translation or integral translation of this X. So, this X will be there and then you will be taking this X plus 1 and then this X minus 1 and so on. Okay. So, this is X plus Z that is X plus N where N comes from Z. So, this is one element 
so this is one element in our q mod h okay so that is something uh, uh, kind of this this graphical interpretation somewhat uh, tells us that what will be an ideal uh, set of representatives for the for this q modulo h hat for example one can restrict oneself uh, in between the rational that are that are there between 0 and 1 okay so i am going to write down another uh, parametrizing set so you can take x plus e z where x is coming from 0 to 1 and then x is just a rational number okay so this is if you think about it this is another set of representatives or or the yeah so so another parametrizing set for this q modulo h okay so so if we if we take for example this 0 plus z and then 1 plus z so we are going to get only z okay that means they are identified okay so this is uh, actually gives us again some geometric interpretation of this q modulo z okay so to understand that geometric interpretation one has to identify q mod e z inside r modulo e z okay so so we have again e z being a subgroup of q q being a subgroup of r where r i am treating it as set of all set of all real numbers with respect to addition so what we are now trying to do we are trying to take this quotient r modulo e z so this r modulo e z again can be parameterized as x plus e z where x is coming from r again using this geometrical interpretation okay you can see that if you try to plot it okay the elements here okay so this is going to be 0 this is going to be 1 this is going to be 2 and so on here minus 1 minus 2 and so on so then if you take some x here then the x plus 1 will lie here x plus 2 will lie here and so on and x minus 1 will lie here so that means so this thing can be reparameterized as x plus e z where x is coming from 0 to 1 okay so that means so basically all we are doing you can take this particular segment okay so and then each element in this particular segment from close to 0 comma open 1 gives you parameterizing set for r modulo h and then if you think about it because 0 plus z is same as 1 plus z so this gives us this identification of r modulo z with uh, s1 okay so r modulo z can be identified with s1 so this is the unit circle which topologically you are identifying 0 and 1 so this has some topological un interpretation So let us not worry about it for time being okay but uh, as a parameterizing set one can easily identify this r modulo e z with uh, the circle s1 so that is just uh, you take this closed 0 and open 1 which has same parameterizing uh, there is a bijective corresponding between closed 0 comma open 1 to s1 so that is all I am saying okay so now if you take these groups okay how you add two elements and so on okay for example let us take this q mod z okay so this q mod z so this looks like so typical element looks like p by q plus z okay so then this can be written as 1 by q plus etc plus 1 by q so let us take uh, p to be positive okay so p is just a some natural number q is also some natural number so then this is going to be p times 1 plus 1 by q plus 1 by q and so on okay so let us not put it here so this is going to be p times plus h 
So, that means what? That means, so this is you are adding 1 by q p number of times uh, and then you are considering the corresponding coset here. Okay? So, that means this is exactly 1 by q plus e z and then in the in your group you add this 1 by q plus e z p number of times. So, then you are exactly getting uh, this particular element on the left side. Okay? So, now if you think about it, if you take this p by q plus e z and then you add this q number of times, okay. again q is natural number. So, then what happens? So, you add this p by q plus etcetera p by q, q number of times. Okay. So, this is you are going to do q number of times. So, then what you are going to get plus e z. So, then you can see that this is going to be exactly equal to q times p by q plus e z. So, that is going to give you p plus e z, but p is some integer. So, that means this p plus e z is exactly e z. Okay? So, that means if I take this p by q plus e z and then add it q number of times then exactly I am getting e z, but e z is just 0 plus e z which is the identity element. So, this is the identity element in in your group q modulo e z. So, that means the order of this p by q plus e z actually divides exactly q. Okay? So, I will leave it to you to actually check okay, or find. So, this is exercise for you okay, find the exact order of p by q plus e z in q modulo h. Okay? So, this tells you that this argument actually tells you that this p by q plus e z it has finite order and uh, it so the sim similar argument one can actually give as long as q is natural number. So, this can be performed p can be any integer. So, that tells you that any element of this group q modulo e z all of them have finite order. Okay? So, they all have finite all elements. So, this is the thing that we have proved all elements in q mod e z have finite order. So, this is something very very surprising thing even though the group is infinite it is actually countably infinite. So, each element of the group has only finite order okay? that is very surprising. So, similar uh, questions can be asked even in the group R modulo e z. Okay? So, I will leave it to you to think about it what happens when you take R modulo e z. For example, like I said you can have the parameterizing set uh, x plus e z where x is coming from uh, 0 to 1. So, if, if x is rational we just observe that it has finite order. So, x can be irrational. Okay, lying between 0 and 1. If you take x irrational, then you can prove that it must have infinite order in this group or modulo h. Okay. So, this is something I will leave it to you to check. So, the exercise find order of x plus e z for x irrational in 0 to 1. Okay? So, this is something you can you can try to do. Okay, so, now let us see some uh, some easy examples. Okay? For example, if I take set of all invertible matrices n by n invertible matrices over uh, over let us say real number. Okay? This is the set of all n by n matrices over real numbers. So, then we have very nice homomorphism from this group to R cross. So, this is non-zero real numbers. 
okay so what is that group homomorphism sending any matrix to the determinant of that matrix and uh, it is a fact from linear algebra if you take product of two matrices the determinant of a b is exactly equal to determinant of a times determinant of b so that means determinant is indeed a group homomorphism from the set of all invertible matrices that is a group of invertible matrices gln of r to r cross okay so then what will be the kernel of this map so this map is usually denoted by det so the determinant map the kernel will be those matrices from gln of r that are having so phi of a to b identity but this is the group of uh, non zero real numbers with respect to multiplication so one is the group identity here on the right side so in particularly the determinant of a should be 1 so those are all the elements that makes the kernel okay and as before uh, we can see that the kernel is nothing but the normal subgroup of this gln of r so it is very interesting uh, subgroup of uh, uh, this uh, the set of all invertible matrices gln of r so again uh, i want to actually emphasize one more example which uh, which is which we have seen already which is the symmetric group okay but if we take this symmetric group uh, there is something called sign of a permutation okay so i want to introduce this sign using uh, some realization of the symmetric group okay this is i, I would say much more powerful tool uh, that one can actually uh, use in understanding the symmetric group. So, let us see how one can understand the symmetric group uh, uh, in a different way. So, let us take Sn. So, this is the symmetric group. Okay. So, recall symmetric group is nothing but on uh, this uh, 1 to n that is what we are talking about. So, this is by definition. So, those permutations from 1 to n to 1 to n. So, where i n is just 1 to n. So, sigma is a bijective function. Okay. So, this is the, the group of symmet uh, the symmetric group of group on n letters. So, now if you think about it we are we already uh, fixed some notation uh, for this group okay given any sigma in S n you write the domain on the top and then you write the code uh, the range or the images of those elements at the bottom. So, this is the symbolic way to actually write uh, given element sigma of this S n okay. So, now what I want actually you to realize, so one can identify this symmetry group in a different way. Actually I, I am going to talk about group actions later, but uh, we are actually going to we, this example is one, one, one such group action of Sn on some particular space. Okay. So, let us not worry about uh, what is indeed happening, but let us actually just uh, let me give you the explicit uh, uh, elements that are associated with each element of this S n and uh, so it, it is like giving very explicit realization of S n as subgroup of J l n. So, that is all I am doing. Okay, for that uh, let us fix some notations. So, let us recall what is J l n of R. So, G L n of R the set of all n by n invertible matrices. So, what I want to do I want to realize S n as subgroup of G L n of R. Okay. So, this means we have a injective homomorphism, injective homomorphism from S n into G L n of R. Okay. So, what is the meaning of injective homomorphism? It is a homomorphism from S n to J l n of R. So, it is a function phi from S n to this J l n of R and it is a 1 to 1, one to 1. This is a group homomorphism 
plus it is 1 to 1 map. That means it is an injective map. Okay, what is this map? Let me explicitly give you what is this map and then it becomes I will leave it to you to check uh, this map is indeed uh, group Mavasam and so on. So, that is again like very trivial. So, to do this uh, let us do one example let us take n equal to 3. So, let us look at S3 for example, one can take sigma to be 1, 2, 3 and then let us say 2, 1, 3. Okay. So, what we are going to do we are going to take this identity matrix okay, this is the identity matrix 3 by 3. So, which will be 1 0 0 0 1 0 and then 0 0 1. So, then what I want to do so when sig when the identity element of S3 should be mapped to this identity element because if you have any group homomorphism. So, identity element of the uh, the domain should be mapped to the identity element of the range. Okay. So, now if you take this identity element, so this is actually the identity element of the S3 should be mapped to this. So, now for example, I want to map sigma to something. So, where I want to map? What I do? I treat this as okay, this is actually just a identity matrix. I take the columns of this matrix, this identity matrix. So, there are 3 columns let us call it E1, E2 and E3. So, I take this sigma and then I apply it on these columns and I just permute them. Okay. So, so what, what is the meaning of that? I take E1, I just replace this with E2 because sigma of 1 is 2. Okay, sigma of 1 is 2. Similarly, I take E3, E2 and then replace with E1 and then I take E3 and then replace with E3. Okay. So, what is E2? E2 is 0, 1, 0. What is E1? 1, 0, 0 and then E3 is just E3 just 0, 0, 1. So, I just take this sigma and map it to this matrix. So, which is obtained from identity matrix by permuting the respective columns. Okay. So, now it is clear what we are going to do in general. For example, let me do one more example. Uh, so, let us take tau, tau to be 1, 2, 3. Let us fix this and then permute this too. So, then tau will be mapped to. So, now you can see that this is E1, this is E3, this is E2. So, that means so, this should be mapped to 1 0 0 0 0 1 and then 0 1 0. Okay. So, this is this is what it should be mapped. So, now I one can also fix row permutations. So, that is not that is also allowed. So, let us fix this column permutation and then work with this. So, it is not a problem. And if you recall from the properties of the determinant, you can see that if you switch two columns, okay, ith column and jth column, then one minus sign will come out. Okay, the identity matrix has determinant being one. Okay, so then, for example, if I take uh, this determinant of, let's say this is i sigma, so this i sigma is this. So, what is this? How it is obtained? So, you kept E3 as it is and then switched E1 and E2. That means 1 minus should come out. This should be minus 1 determinant of identity. So, which is exactly minus 1. Similarly, if you take the determinant of determinant of I tau, okay, I am calling the image as I sigma I tau. So, that is again you switched only. Uh, you kept 1 as it is and then you switch 2 and 3. So, it has to be again minus 1. Okay. So, now it is clear what is the homomorphism. You take from Sn to Gln of R, you take any sigma and then you apply the sigma on this n by n identity matrix which you call it I sigma. Okay. So, basically what is I sigma? I sigma is obtained from this permuting this column vectors 
you take e sigma 1 e sigma 2 and so on e sigma n ok. So, now if you think about it ok if you apply i sigma tau so then it will become exactly e sigma tau 1 e sigma tau 2 and so on e sigma tau n ok. So, now so this is just applying first tau and then applying sigma on this ok. So, if you just think about it so this is just applying sigma tau on identity ok. So, so this is just the product of ok i sigma i tau. So, I will leave it to you to verify this ok this is something easy to verify. So, that is it is indeed a group homomorphism. So, now if you think about it so then what is the sign. So, the sign of sigma I want to define it to be determinant of this i sigma. So, this is my definition of the sign ok. So, since determinant is indeed group homomorphism from GLN of R to R cross ok. So, now if you compose two group homomorphisms that is first determinant and then this uh, uh, this sign ok this uh, this is uh, let us call it ok. So, this is the embedding ok let us call it iota ok. So, if I take this iota and then the determinant the composition of these two. So, both are actually group homomorphism. So, the composition will be group homomorphism. So, this map we call it the sign map ok. So, this actually matches with the sign that you learn in about permutations. So, we will also see later how it matches, but now it is clear that uh, indeed what is happening here ok. Whenever you switch two columns you get minus sign out ok. The number of switching that you make is what counted in this sign ok. Again the parity of that is counted whether you are switching odd number of times or even number of times. So, that is what counted. So, now if you take this sign which is a group homomorphism from S n to naturally map to plus or minus 1 because determinant of identity is 1 every time switching actually gives you either plus 1 or minus 1. So, you get you get a map from S n to plus or minus 1 which is a group homomorphism and what will be the kernel of this group homomorphism. So, this is going to be those permutation in S n such that the sign of that permutation is exactly even ok. So, that is exactly called alternating group. So, this is called alternating permutation ok which is denoted by a n. So, a n is a normal subgroup of S n by the construction because it is realized as kernel of this group homomorphism that is given by sign permutation. So, this a n now in terms of writing permutation as a product of cycles and all we will see that it will be product of even cycles always because of this property ok. So, that will be proved later, but I want to introduce the alternating group uh, as kernel of this sign homomorphism. ok. I will stop here and uh, we will continue with uh, some more uh, definitions uh, in the next class in particularly we will talk about uh, what is called direct product and internal direct product ok. So, so I will stop here thank you.